This special broadcast of AEAC is made possible by Crossman Corporation, Boomerx USA, Air Venturi, Hudson USA, Daystate, Optisan Optics, Diana Airguns, Predator Pellets, Air Arms, and Virox Sport. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Folks, we're here with Richard Dixon, or Dick Dixon, in the JSB Predator booth. That's it. That's um, it. I, I wanted to stop by because there's some new things going on here, and I've asked Dick to take you guys through it. So, Dick, if you would, the floor is yours. Steve, thank you very much. We always look forward to talking with you thank each you. and every year. Yeah, this year we've got some, some exciting new items uh, and some, some potential new items coming up down the road. Uh, our first most exciting thing is we've got a new screw top lid coming. Woo! And I know that doesn't sound like a, a, a big thing, but no. for us it is. No, no, no. Let me let me rephrase that. For us, <laughs> that is a huge thing. And I know I speak on behalf of everybody when I well, say thank you. We we listen, but it's taken us a long time to develop that. So uh, over the next year, the 2019. We will be moving out the old inventory, refreshing it with the new screw top lids. And so by the end of 2019, we'll have all of our existing friction top lids replaced with actual screw, uh, screw top lids. So we say this, this year, JSB is going screwy. I like it. Can I get an amen? The screw top lids. Well, that's great news, but I saw something behind you that yeah. I'm guessing you want to talk about as well. It has to do with the devil. Absolutely. It's called the Hades pellet. It's a frangible pellet that literally, once it hits, it starts to break apart. And uh, uh, we're pretty excited about it. So the 22s are coming out literally this next month. Okay. The 25s are still being developed and hopefully will be out by the first of the summer. Okay. So we're looking for a June rollout okay. on, on that product. And so. when you say a frangible pellet, that's not like the frangible BB. In no. Aventuri, this is designed for hunting. It is. It's a hunting pellet, okay. and it's got it, it's a hollow head design with crosses cut in the middle of it or molded into the middle, so that when it does hit, it it breaks apart. It literally explodes okay. on contact. So the idea is to transfer all that energy, create ma uh, the most tissue damage exactly. as we can. Take Very down. humane. Take down. Uh, that's right. that's what's important. So. It, it hits and it takes down, even if you don't get a direct kill shot, it does wound the animal so it, it can be put out of its misery right there. So Sounds good. You bet. What, what else you got cooking? Well, the 20 caliber has been kind of a, uh, a stepchild in the industry. At one time it was very popular and, you know, with all the, the PCPs and the bigger calibers, the 20 caliber kind of lost favor with, with shooters. And it's come back, and it's come back dramatically. And like all technology within the air gun in industry, uh, the big PCPs just cannot hold on uh, to the lighter weight 20 calibers. Right. So we developed a new 15.89 grain, heavy 20 caliber, so that you know it can it can stand up to the power that these uh, the the PCPs. Uh, will shoot. So we have both the, the original 20 caliber and then the new heavy. So to Dick's point, I've my barometer has been telling me what you guys are seeing. You know, I've, I've only been at this three years, but you know, I don't get a whole lot of requests come across my desk, so to speak, for the 20 cal. But over the last six months, I've been getting more and more requests in the comments of the videos can you review X, Y, or Z in 20 cal? And that's kind of got me scratching my head. I mean, now don't get me wrong, I get that it's a slipperier bullet, a better ballistic coefficient, flatter, longer, you know, all these good things. But I guess now you're saying you're answering that call with a heavier 20 cal, exactly. so it'll work with the new high-end PCP, so maybe we'll see the factories start to bring back those barrels for us? And they are, okay. they are starting to. You know, we uh, do a lot of business with all the major uh, uh, online and wholesale uh, air gun people and they didn't really notice any increase in 20s until like you did uh, a couple, about a year and a half ago and all of a sudden the demand has increased substantially so excellent well on the on the on the note of the 20 cal 
these guys are always asking me back home if, if you guys are ever going to step into that uh, that big board or that slug arena. Can you speak to that a little bit and what you guys have been working on? Well, sure. Uh, you know, JSB is, is, is always quality, quality oriented. And so they have not just willy-nilly jumped into things. They like to see that there's a market for it, first of all. And understand, being in the Czech Republic, there are a lot, and Europe, there's a lot of limitations on weight, calibers, uh, power. Big time. And so America is, is, is great, but it's only a part of the total market. So they're very aware of the new demand for the heavy slugs and are in the process of reviewing an opportunity to develop slugs for uh, under the JSB label. And again, it's not something that's easy to do. Uh, their, their business has always been the Diablo or the wad cutter shapes or the, our polymag uh, pellets. So this is a new adventure and they want to get it right. And if they don't get it right, we're not coming out, out with them. So, so there you go, guys. I wanted them to hear it from you because we have seen that change in the last two years. You know, people are starting to compete with slugs. They're starting to hunt with slugs. Manufacturers are answering that call and developing the barrels that aren't choked so it performs sure. with the slugs. We got these slug companies coming out of the works now, and I know they're all wondering, you know, can I get it from my favorite pellet manufacturer, JSB? And I know you're that to a lot of them. Well, you know, the, the, the guys that are out there right now making these slugs are really committed. It's a uh, commitment of love, and it's very labor-intensive for them to produce. I know that. Uh, and for JSB to come out with something that requires that much time and effort uh, would not be cost effective. So there has to be a marriage of production capabilities and top quality. And, and again, if that doesn't happen, you will not see JSB with slugs. If it does happen, you will see it. So does that mean that this is something you're keeping in-house in the Czech Republic or are you farming this out to maybe a, another manufacturer to help you with the slugs? No, it's all going to be done in the Czech Republic. Okay. So it, if it's going to be done, it will be done by JSB in the JSB uh, factories. Great. So speaking to that a little bit, um, I've been invited to visit the JSB factory booth in Iwa, the Iwa Outdoor Classics, which is this equivalent in Germany in March. So I know here in the States, there's a lot of confusion as to who Predator JSB sure. here is. So if you could talk to that a little bit, maybe tell the story a little bit, who you guys are, sure. how it fits in, and who you are to us. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, Predator International started in, in 2000, I believe. Uh, I was not involved in it. It is a, it was began as a patent on the polymer tipped hollow head design pellet. Exactly. And the people that that invented it were really creative. Good shooters, good hunters, a lot of military experience, but didn't have a lot of marketing capabilities. So in their efforts, we came in, Jay, my partner Jay and I bought the company and uh, uh, developed it even further. At the time, there was a 177 and a 22 caliber. Jay. Hi. Jay. <laughs> and we've since expanded that to a 20 caliber, 177, 22, uh, 25, 30, and 35 calibers. Now, JSB, uh, the, uh, the Czech JSB uh, company manufactures those for us. Right. And they are our exclusive di distributor for European market and the Middle East. Okay. We in turn are their distributor, exclusive distributor for the Western Hemisphere and the Pacific Rim areas. For the JSB pellets. JSB, yes. Got and it. our own Predator pellets. G and the G Where does the GTO fit into all that? GTO was something that we asked them to develop based on, here's, uh, uh, based on, here we go. Uh, based on a need originally for a wad cutter for junior ROTC members because lead, as you know, is kind of a political football right now. Yep, a little bit. And a lot of GTO, or, uh, junior ROTC groups were losing their ability to compete if they use lead. And there really wasn't anything out there that would offer them the ability 
to compete with teams that still shot lead. So JSB, under our request, created the, uh, the, the GTO pellets, which are a tin-based uh, pellet. And what we found is that not only are they shooting well, but they are sh shooting in better in some cases than actual lead pellets. Yeah, I want to speak to that, and I know a lot of them at home are doing this right now because I get comments all the time from them where they're always kind of blown away at how these lead-free alloys perform, even at distances like 50 and 100 yards, and they seem to be very versatile, like they work well across a large variety of guns. I have my own beliefs as far as why I think that is. I personally think it's because they're a harder material. I think so. So they, they stay so perfectly formed, and when you open them in the tin, it looks like they literally just came off the assembly line. I mean, exactly. even coming all the way from, from, uh, from the Czech Republic, and they're such a great load if you're concerned with backdrop, you know, or maybe you're shooting in a barn and you don't want to put holes in things, and and it uh, and ROTC like you're talking about here. If you're worried about the toxicity, and it's just it's just one of those things I didn't expect that kind of really blew me away, and it's working well in everything. And I wanted to make sure you know, to mention lot, it here and ask you about it. A lot of shooters have asked the question, "What does it do to my barrel?" And that's a good question. Great question. And we found that it absolutely has no effect. Uh, no damage whatsoever on a barrel. So long term, you can use a GTO with little or no problems, any any more than a traditional lead pellet. You've heard it straight from them, and it's a what it is? It's it's a tin alloy. It's basically tin. Okay. Yes. So slightly lighter than a, a traditional lead pellet of the same size, but surprisingly, you don't have to do a whole lot of adjustment on the gun in order for it to use a GTO pellet. Great. So you can go from lead to GTO without a problem. Yeah, I've noticed this. I've noticed the same thing. Like a lot of these guys are have, are in the mindset where they need to season a barrel for 20 or 30 shots, and you know every time you switch a pellet, I, I that has not been my experience at all over the last three years. And I get my hands on a lot of product and do a lot of shooting, and I found that you can literally go five with the lead, five with this, five with the lead, five with this, and it doesn't matter. They they, they just stack pellets at 25 and 50 yards. It's, it's, it's a it really actually, neat, neat product. It shocked us as to how well they actually perform. <laughs> well, you good. Know? That makes two of us. <laughs> well, um, thank you, Dick. I really appreciate well, you spending time. Well, I tell you what, time. Steve, you just keep getting smarter and smarter, you know? <laughs> it used to be that you'd ask questions. Now people come to you and ask the questions. So that's uh, that's saying a lot. You're, you've really been terrific for our industry. Well, thank you. I, I'm, I'm stepping into that just a little bit. You know, when I started this three years ago, Dick and Jay and Predator and JSB, they were one of the very first groups to see the passion, what I was trying to bring to you guys. And, and uh, you know, I, I was very green then and not really doing a great job, but I do want to thank these guys for, for seeing that and getting behind me and having the confidence in all you do for them and all you do for me, well, we and want sincerely. Thank, we want to thank our customers. Uh, they've been very loyal, and we really appreciate it. But you've become a spokesperson within the, the industry and a go-to kind of guy. So, uh, like I say, we we can't tell you how much we appreciate that. The so privilege thank you. and the honor is mine. Always. Thank, thank you. Thanks.